There is eight lead acid truck batteries sitting right there. And what's really surprised me. <laughs> Hello and welcome back to SB Blown Away. In this week's video I will be getting stuck into the electrical repairs. We start by tearing out all of the old system while sitting on anchor. Uh, we are converting to... I'm converting the boat across to lithium on the domestic bank. Um, well, I can still live on here, I figured I may as well update the battery system. Look at taking out the lead acid batteries and replace them with the lithium bank. The lithium batteries are slightly different sizes because they're 200 amp batteries, whereas the lead acid ones are in their 90s. So I need to make some new battery trays and install the battery trays, which I did about seven years ago, I think, when I re-engined re the boat. <clears throat> so what we're talking about doing, um, this little lot that's in here at the moment needs to come out. So let's take a look at what's hidden in that hole. Currently I have four Varta 100 amp batteries giving me a combined total of 400 amps. Not all 400 amps are actually usable. With a lead acid battery we can only use about a quarter of its capacity before we do damage to the battery bank which in this instance would give me approximately 100 amps of usable power which has been more than enough for the last 20 years I've owned the boat. So why are you changing to lithium? Well my lead acid batteries have lasted me five years and they're due a change. Each of these Varta batteries are currently 220 euros on the shelf in the local chandlery. That's a total cost of 880 euros for four batteries of which I can only use 100 amps. So let's take a look at the cost of the lithium by comparison. First off, the chemistry of lithium is completely different to lead acid. Lithium batteries can be safely discharged down to 10%, giving me a usable 90% of battery capacity, which means that just one battery will give me 180 usable amps. It means I don't need four lead acid batteries. I can do the same thing with one lithium battery. So what's that going to cost me? Quick trawl on the internet and I found a 200 amp Renogy lithium ion battery for 600 euros. And they came with a 10 year guarantee, which is double the lifespan of any lead acid battery I've ever had. So what about the additional costs? My old chargers would not change to lithium, so I've had to replace them. And of course there are the sundry costs of cables, connectors and heat shrink etc. Back to that split electrical system, don't forget I have a 12 volt and a 24 volt system. So I am going to take on board 4 lithium batteries to replace 8 lead acid batteries. And needs to be replaced with, currently unboxing my new batteries. <clears throat> so I can put these on charge. And balance out the charge state on all of them. Hmm. Yeah, I've rigged this up very quickly. And basically, I'm just trying to put life back into these batteries because they all have to be balanced. So all of this kit is the Victron equipment that I've been waiting to fit. I have a weather window uh, from next week, and uh, the forecast is nothing but good weather. So I'm planning on getting these installed. Um, just to get all of the sails at the same level uh, because when these are all attached in sync um, the sails need to be the same level or they register weird and the chargers don't work properly so um, I just very quickly attached this and plugged it in and uh, I'm going to leave that to charge Good morning! It's time time to take a look at the electrical system and it's time to fit these new lithium batteries We are on anchor Oh, I keep saying that <clears throat> I, I am on anchor, <laughs> there is no we, it is me, I'm on anchor, um, my windlass is not going to work while the battery is disconnected so I've been watching the weather quite intently to ensure that there's a, a weather window of good sunshine and light winds so that I can pull those batteries out and rewire the charging sources, so um, let's take a look. So here's some of the uh, spaghetti that's in here. 
Um, there's currently six batteries here and two batteries under the nav station. These batteries here are the engine start ones, which are actually far older than any of the others. Uh, you can zoom in on that, it's 2017. So these batteries are seven years old. Um, I may well change these out just because I can. And if you look, look where those batteries came from. Car 4. They're supermarket batteries and they lasted me seven years. These batteries, Varta, from the Chandlery. About three times the price and they lasted three years. You don't always get what you pay for. The boat does have a split electrical system. So it has a 12 volt system which takes care of the small consumers and it has a 24 volt system that takes care of the big consumers. And the reason for that is it used to have a 24 volt engine and the 12 volts and the 12 volts were only supplied by a DC DC charger. Uh, when the engine was damaged many years ago by some contractors, I had to re-engine and the only engine available was a 12 volt. So I bought a 12 volt engine that had a 24 volt alternator option. The reason I don't switch the whole thing out to 12 volt is that the windlass is 24 volt, the fridge is 24 volt and the water maker is 24 volt. So for me to go 12, that's a lot of things to change, replace, repair, whatever. I don't need the heartache, so split electrical system stays. Um, so let's get started on it. Wind generator off. Solar panels off. 24 volt service is off. 12 volt service are off. So I need to label everything so I know where the cables are going from the charging sources because the charging sources, the solar panels on the roof and on the bimini etc, they all remain in place, they're not leaving. Um, the only thing that's been changed are the uh, charge controllers, still trays at later date during the winter, get the welding set out and make the trays up. Um, I can then hopefully transfer the batteries back into this area but whilst on anchor there's no way I can weld up new battery trays, it's just not going to happen so I need to um, temporarily fit the batteries elsewhere I suspect. We'll see. Um, so I've fired up the generator so that I can run a fan because it is pretty warm in here. Um, and also I'm going to plug that transformer in so that my fridge carries on working and my food doesn't defrost. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. Hey, kind of hoping I was gonna get at least one battery in this box. Maybe not. Okay. Not many batteries going in there then. Just down inside of here are the AC chargers, the charge controllers for the 12 volt panels, the charge controller for the 24 volt panel, which is a problem because it doesn't accept lithium, and my inverter. And all of this is mounted on top of uh, plastic chopping boards, the big industrial ones, so that it's insulated from the hull. Um, yeah. Okay. So this is where the games begin, really, because a lot of these cables are going to have to be um, changed out. And they are not necessarily the easiest things in the world to get to. 
And to be honest, I don't even know where half of them go. But they were all replaced when the engine was done, so I'm kind of thinking they've all got to go back together. And a whole bunch of them down there for 24 volt. Not so many for the 12s, but there are multiple cables. Not need an electrician. These are pretty straightforward, they just plug into a extension cable which runs off of my mains system into a hot water tank which is in the next compartment that way. The cables I'm using are pushing off to one side and labelling. The cables that aren't being used I'm cutting free and I'm going to move them out. Same with all this equipment here. The stuff that I'm not using, I'm going to move it out of the way. Um, I'm not an electrician and it gets confusing when you've got so many cables laying around. You know, this, this is a mess in here and it needs swearing away and that's partly why I'm doing this. I suspect this goes to the electrical panel because it's um, original. And I know it's original because it's spray painted silver. And uh, when I had the engine room shot blast and all the original wiring was still in here. batteries that I have just removed are from the 12 volt system. I'm now going to turn my attention on to the 24 volt system. Again, a further four lead acid batteries. Well, that's that's uh, yep. quite a heavy weight of batteries moved and gone. This is the remote for the monitor. It's for the wind generator. That is the connections for the solar panels that I deploy on the Ford 10. Um, unfortunately, I can't reuse this box. And Marlec do not make one suitable for lithium batteries. So my wind generator, probably obsolete. Which is really sad because I quite like that wind generator. <laughs> I've had a wind generator of that mizzen mass for like... 20 plus years is one of the first things I installed because in the UK solar panels are relatively useless correct me as much as you want solar panels in the UK not as much use as a wind generator and originally the only source of uh, power this boat had on a mooring was the wind generator um, I only went over to solar once I came down into the Mediterranean now uh, I'm not sure 
how this is going to pan out so I'm going to tape all these connections closed because the wind generator is obviously able to spin and there's wind so it will generate power so I need to make sure that these connections are all separate from each other um, there is no way of disabling that wind generator That is the last of the lead acid batteries to be removed from the battery compartment. I'm just in the process of taking these batteries off of blown away. <clears throat> so there's eight. There is eight lead acid truck batteries sitting right there. What's really surprised me is how much more of the water line I can see. Now I know you're all sick of watching me sanding and painting and varnishing and stuff but there is more footage to come with me varnishing the tow rail and this rubbing stream. Um, it will probably be a supporters video and only available via Kofi or Patreon. And here's a quick teaser for those of you with a sanding and varnish fetish. Hopefully I will see you again next week when I start to put together the electrical system and there is a lot of head scratching. Okay that is it for this week and a big shout out to my monthly supporters on Kofi, the McKenna family, David Luchford, Captain Svetlana and now Graham Elvey who's moved over from Patreon. And if you'd like to join the club, then please see the link down below in the comment section. A big shout out to the people that are on your screen now for sending one-off donations. As always, a big shout out to my Patreon supporters, Matt, Michael, Ian, Miles, Timmy Othi, JG, Jim Bracken, and the new kid on the black, Johannes Mariotti, who is in Italy and has his own boat. Uh, thank you for that Johannes, much appreciated. And all of the polo shirts that were due have been dispatched. If you haven't received them, please let me know. They should be with you shortly. And if you've managed to get this far without turning off, there are some more videos in the watch more section. If you haven't already, please click on subscribe, like, share with your friends, ring the bell for further notifications. And hopefully I'll see you again next week.